to another episode of Universe Extended, the Planning Phase Syndicate After Hours content about Spoilerville for all the Star Wars shows and books of your dreams. Tonight, we are going to be airing a spoiler episode of Bad Batch, because why not? We have that coming up, right? And that is brand new and ready to roll. With that being said, let me bring in my co-host for our After Hours show. Welcome back, JJ, to Universe Extended, episode 19, review of Bad Batch 1 and 2. How are you doing tonight, sir? Excited to talk about some Bad Batch, man. Uh, it was uh, it was a nice uh, return back to that particular era of the Galactic Civil War, technically, and uh, and catch up with the our favorite batch of clones. Yeah, it is nice, right? It was it was very fun. Um, we were able to see things that we'll talk about in a minute. I want to caveat this whole discussion with making sure you understand this is a spoiler zone. I need a little splash that goes spoiler zone. Greg, get Greg, make me a spoiler zone splash. That would be awesome. But I thought it would be fun to resurrect our universe extended series after a break. After we did Andor, we never got to Tales of the Jedi, which I apologize for. And we probably won't get to it now with Bad Batch firing up and the Acolytes and Mandalorian (laughs) coming up on the teals. But we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some time and we'll get through Tales of the Jedi. But we thought we'd do our spoiler cast where we recap all of our thoughts on bad batch for this version of universe extended if you do not know who we are we are planning face syndicate and you can follow our regular star wars x-wing miniature podcast every sunday night 9 p.m eastern live talking all things x-wing with our amazing series and our crazy list breakdowns With that being said, JJ, I did not watch Bad Batch until Wednesday night. I literally forgot that it came out on Wednesday. Even though you told me, are you ready to watch Bad Batch? (laughs) I didn't watch it during break. I didn't do anything. I just happened to uh, be working hard enough. I didn't feel like uh, watching Bad Batch. And then I remembered it about 8 o'clock. I was like, oh, crap. I didn't get to watch Bad Batch. So I poured myself some lovely Diet Pepsi broke out my little applicator pen and uh, enjoyed me some two episodes of Bad Batch. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a interesting start to the series. So it looks like they, um, they start off at what looks like a tropical location, right? Where um, the Bad Batch was trying to recover um, some cargo for their, uh, for their overlord, essentially <laughs> to, um, <laughs> to complete a job. And we do get a glimpse of Omega again, uh, who is uh, fishing right off of their ship. And uh, we get to see Omega display her skills that she's developed. She's uh, quite a little, a, a little Legolas, basically, for Star Wars with her little bow and arrow. Uh, just uh, probably had racked up more of a kill count than any other of the clones for that entire episode <laughs> against those, uh, those giant crabs. Um, so it was nice to see that she's taken her training and stuff. And um, and applying it and becoming uh, an actual like contributing member for the Bat Batch there, and um, then we get cut into a scene that kind of leads into the crux of um, the the point of contention later on in episode two, where Omega overhears a um, a conversation about the, this, whether or not the decision to. Uh, take Omega out of Camino uh, before the destruction of the labs there was the right thing to do or not. And she kind of like feels guilty for having to, to place that burden on the rest of the team for their actions there. And she kind of like carries a chip on her shoulder since that part there trying to, I guess, try to prove her worth to the team. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause you would have thought she would have already proven her worth by now. We already went through yeah. a whole, season where she did that yeah exactly yeah um i I mean i I get it she's a a young kid and you're always gonna constantly like question yourself you know you're you're not confident enough yet um so i can get it from that part there but yeah it's like they're revisiting that that storyline again uh with omega um but still it was nice to see at least her being a little more mature about it this time around 
Yeah, which is a little weird. I was worried at first because I felt like she was going to try some weird force like maneuver because she was like sitting there and then also she raises her hand and you're like, what? Like, yeah. I, you know, no, like, I know we are rumored that she could have force, but for Christ's sake, like, no. we don't need that episode one. Yeah, no, no, she, she, I don't believe she's going to be force sensitive. Hell no, no, absolutely not. Um, but yeah, so that leads on to uh, the Bad Batch returning back to their base and they're getting um, information about a score that will help them essentially retire um, from having to do all those little missions there. And they're told about the Empire uh, going into Serrano to plunder the war chest that Count Dooku had there um, at his uh, at his Citadel from the Clone Wars. So their objective was to go in and grab one of the uh, the war chests and then just return because that's all they needed in order for them to retire. And that's what leads them to go out to that particular planet to try to in, uh, essentially capture that there. Now for a hot second, I thought we were going to see like a little bit of a heist where they go in and actually take over a transport and pretend to be clone pilots transporting it. And then they just switch their, their coordinates. Like I thought that's what was going to happen. But no, they're out there and they just grabbed like this tiny little box <laughs> and like to get out. I was like, guys, you, you could easily overpower that transport, guys. Like, come on. Yeah, like, why were you just, yeah, why didn't you go in, knock out the guards in there to begin with before it even taken off and then like set the thermal detonators and put one person in the ship and the rest in that. I, I, I didn't understand that either. Yeah, like I, I was actually expecting them to to try to pull that off, and then for a second, like I thought, you know, when they when they went to the Y wing, uh, the V wings that were parked there, um, I thought I'm like, okay, so one of them pretends to be like the the escort that's taking the transport out, but you know, they go into this chain of events now where they they're still trying to remain stealthy during this whole time. You know, they quietly try to knock out one of the guards um, and try to you know, just remain undetected until, of course, everything goes wrong. And then it turns into this whole firefight where the team is separated there. Um, we get to see a little bit more of that side of the Clone Wars that we never got to see, particularly the planet that Dooku was on. We've seen the Citadel before in the Clone Wars, but we never really get to see anything outside of it. And we get to see the the battle that ensued there that basically destroyed an entire town uh, or city that was adjacent to the citadel uh where the republic and the cis horses basically clashed there and it was basically like a machine graveyard there um i i thought that was a nice little bit of of like background that we hadn't seen yet yeah and i i did like that but i didn't i so so this is okay i don't know i i after they went off of the world and killed all those sh crab like people Right. You know, they come back and they still feel they're indebted to, um, you know, to that lady. Right. So why I don't understand how they're still indebted. Right. And didn't she kind of double cross them and screw them over? Why are they still working with her? Because they got nobody else, basically, at this point. I, I just I find that a hard sell because she did kind of screw them over a little bit. Right. Yeah. Like she didn't sell them out, but she kind of did. Yeah. So I'm a little confused why they would stay working with her. We never got like, I, I didn't understand that piece of it. What bothered me even more is that they all want to go and get a war chest, right? And so when you think about a war chest and they show up and there's all these ships with millions of containers, why are you even go bothering to go on? the Why steal anything? Just leave. Like I would just immediately get up and leave. Be like, I ah, no, thank you. Right. Well, oh, there's troopers everywhere there. You're going to break into a container that you have no idea what's in there. There's no direction they were given. It's not a concise mission. I it did not if it felt like very poor writing. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I guess it, they kind of use that as a narrating piece because eventually when the, the transport takes off, um, they force the the container ship to purge all of its cargo everywhere in order for them to go land and try to pick up that that crate later on. Um, so we do see Omega end up getting stuck with tech and, uh, I forget the other one, um, in which tech ends up suffering a severe leg injury after the crash, um, where they're eventually found by a local from that planet there, um, who, uh, against as well, um, 
take some out to give them a little bit of shelter until they're able to go back in and get saved there. Now, for a hot second, um, when I saw that guy, I thought that he was actually um, the senator's son that we see in Tales of the Jedi for the Count Dooku, um, like, th like throwback episode where we see like a younger dark, uh, a younger Count Dooku um, when he starts his path towards the dark side there. Um, because he specifically talks about, um, you know, how the war chest is cursed and all that treasure is there because he's basically taken it from the people and stuff and just basically hoarded it there during the, the time of the Clone Wars. Um, it, it just made, it kind of like made me think of that throwback to that particular, um, that particular story from Tales of the Jedi. Yeah. And I don't, I, I agree with you. I was, I did not think about that. Like, oh, hey, maybe that's one of those guys from there um which makes quite a bit of sense right like i mean like that's that's something that you could easily see um but i don't know it, it, some of it was just a little crazy uh for what they were trying to do um and i was a little confused what they were actually trying to get at um yeah so then after that, we see them go to create a disturb or a dis distraction, right? So, and then we find out they get caught basically and they launch the ship with them on it, right? So the troopers, instead of just figuring out which one it is, they launch the ships. Like, like this is pure imperial, like stupidity. Like, yes, let's launch the ship with the people on it. We don't know how dangerous they are. We don't know whether they could just kill us all and take the ship. I mean, even if you have a V-Wing guide, like, is that V-Wing's going to shoot down all those troopers in there? I I mean, later on, we see the Empire does stupid things, but they obviously want what's in all of the, all of Dooku's stuff. Um, well, I think, I think part of it, right, is, like, this is the beginning of the Empire's arrogance, right? Because they... They explicitly talk about it during Andor, right? Like the, the the mentality that the Empire has that, you know, they're superior and there's no possible way that anybody can match them, especially this early on, right? Like the Empire is pretty much unimposed. There's like no rebellion whatsoever and they can inflict their will to anyone. So for them to even think that there's somebody competent enough to try to steal from them or oppose them is something that's unheard of, right? Like it, it, as we see towards the the end of the episode will get there that that kind of drives that point in more right that they're more worried about their own position and their own um their own politics versus actually being competent yeah um which makes sense because yeah like you said andor it, that kind of fits into that boat right you know where where we see some over reach um that we normally would not see uh with it so i think there i think you're right i think there is that um, but obviously they get caught, right. Or kind of caught and the empire starts alerting everybody and everybody's going crazy, uh, which I was surprised didn't happen sooner. <laughs> and then the V wings blow up to create a distraction, which is hilarious. And the first question I have is when are we getting V wings and X wing and empire? Um, even if they all have dead man switches and blow up after four turns. <laughs> um, my guess is that it will probably come in a card pack. Um, and we'll we'll have them like transition over at that point because that's that's how they've done it so far with some of the other ships and um like the fang fighters for instance um for the rebels they just came in a card pack so i think that that's how it'll be it'll end up coming over to the to the empire which would be kind of, it still would be kind of cool right you know um i don't know but anyway so so they go into dooku's thing and here's this what i'm disappointed about uh, also they open the chests up and they, they only have credits in there. Nobody found any Sith artifacts. Where the hell are the Sith artifacts? We know they're there. We know Dooku is a Sith. We know he had well, shit. Remember, there was a transport that they saw take off before. And also, there's a bunch of other containers that were there, too. So I it, it wouldn't surprise me that it might have been, if it was a priority item straight from Palpatine, I'm pretty sure that would have been the first thing that's gone. All right, and that's fair, but nobody would know about that other than um, Pell. He's the only one. Yeah. That's true.
like for me, I think that um, uh, and slowly but surely, uh, and, and this is like a side tangent for this. Um, if you played Battlefront 2, the newer one done by EA, um, during this whole story with Aiden Versio, there was a point where Del Mico gets um, involved with Luke Skywalker on, on a separate mission where they're sent to go into um, into one of the Palpatine's secret chambers where they have a bunch of like special items there. And Luke was looking for a particular item from that loot there. I think that a lot of those items are taken from from uh, Dooku's war chest area probably landed in that. And I hope that we get to see a little bit more of what exactly uh, Palp was hiding in those, in those bunkers, essentially. Yeah, that would be nice. It would be very nice if we could see some of those things, right? You know? Yeah. So uh, going back to the, the story there, um, we get a moment where the gentleman that helps out the clones uh, takes Omega down to um to like a, a little on the great uh, underground cavern under his residence where he basically has a workshop and he introduces her to a toy and it it, it it's kind of a like a like a knee jerker moment right because at that point you begin to understand that omega never had like a childhood because she doesn't understand the concept of a toy you know, they, he gave her a kaleidoscope and she looks at it and she's like, oh, this is full of jewels. This is obviously like treasure and stuff. And he's trying to explain to her like, no, this is a toy. Like, this is not treasure. This is for you to have fun. And it's like a foreign concept to her. And it's it's kind of sad at that point, right? Like, this is a kid that's basically been brought up just for the purpose of war, you know? Yeah. And I did like that part of it. I did think that was kind of cool being able to see some of those um you know some of those things where you're like oh hey what is this you know like what is this thing and um her her being able to have that is kind of um that's kind of crazy to me um because there's almost no way that these people have you know like that she's ever had any sort of normalcy and he, that guy has no way to know it. And he gets frustrated. Like you can he, hear it in his eyes. He's getting frustrated. He's like, what the hell? What's going on? Why is, you know, why is she doing this? You know, um, though some of me wonders like if that guy's related to Dooku because he kind of looks like, yeah, him, but yeah. Right. Like Dooku's long lost brother that has the force, but yet refuses to use it. <laughs> yeah. Something crazy weird, you know, like that, like, Oh, I don't tell anyone, you know? Um, I don't know. So I think that that's, um, that's that. And then she decides to go on her own and decides to go out and find the war chest herself because she has to get credits. And I just, again, that, that piece of it just feels very weird to me. Like, they didn't have enough time to, like, explain the storyline. And I guess if you go back and watch um, Resistance, it feels like some of the earlier Resistance shows a little bit. Um, just with characters we like a little bit more. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I, I get why she decided to go that way, right? Because, again, this is her... Um you know, trying to to prove to herself and to the team that, you know, a, she was worth it. You know, she was worth the effort that they put in in season one to go rescue her out of Camino. And she wants to prove that she's an, a part of the team, not just a, a person that they rescued that's just hanging out with them, right? She wants to, like, prove her worth as a clone to to the rest of the team. And I think that's the struggle that she's she's trying to res to prove to herself that she's worth it, you know? Yeah. So she goes out, gets stuck in the container, it slides further down the hill, and then they got to save her. <laughs> now, the one part that I took away from there, right, is the um, the E-Web Blaster, right, that they had deployed there. Um, I, <laughs> From a military standpoint, right, like they're sending out scouts to go try to inspect the fallen crates to see if, if it's there, right, or if like the... the the people that they're trying to track down is there. What scout do you know brings a heavy freaking machine gun <laughs> that needs to be mounted on a scouting mission and then just sets it up right in the open, like just I, waiting? <laughs> like, so, so somebody that pre plans something crazy. <laughs> they're like, no, you just need a blaster rifle. It's like, no, I'm bringing this machine gun with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. 
I agree with you. That's it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they used it later on to take down a V wing somehow. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was just interesting that they they decided to bring that out and like a scouting uh, type thing. Um, so once the um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so once they the um, the the crew is rescued finally by um, by Hunter um, that brings the, the shuttle and brings them out and they they basically leave the treasure that they're going for. Uh, we get a moment now where the uh, the Imperial. I forget his name, um, but basically the Imperial inspector that was sent on, oh, sorry, the Imperial commander that was sent to originally destroy Camino and reported that the Bad Batch had been taken care of, um, comes to learn that it was the Bad Batch that come in again to uh, basically do this. And in order to cover up his incompetence, he decides to uh, take out the commander of that particular base just so he can keep that report under wraps away from Tarkin. Um, just kind of further cementing the ruthlessness that the Empire has and just trying to hold on to one's position, one power. Um, Storyline that kind of felt very similar to what we saw in the beginning of Andor, right? When they suppressed the report originally mm -hmm. because they didn't want the Empire's involvement. Uh, that's exactly what like that felt like to me. Yeah, which is crazy, right? I don't know. They, I don't know. I like, like I said, that piece of it I liked um, quite a bit because we got to see some ruthlessness we don't you don't normally see in those cartoon versions um mm -hmm. and that felt like andor a little bit um yeah. being very aggressive murdering somebody going out of their way uh to do something um so i liked it and i liked that it was kind of a follow-up from last season um yeah for it so i thought that was pretty neat too yeah definitely um, so what do you think so far for the start of the show um, in terms of let's let's compare it to Andor as what? good or as as worse than Andor in terms it's of the worse than Andor. starting episodes as far as the starting episode remember start off a little slow no nope, worse than Andor Andor okay. had better climate and story building so far than Bad Batch did and, and maybe it's because Andor doesn't have a previous successor we had Bad Batch where a lot of the episodes had just one-off type things where they were running around doing some other caper and then they get in trouble and save themselves. And it's like, I don't care. You're not furthering my storyline. And if the whole point of the show is to have two, the storyline be, they do random one-off things and then they connect them a little bit because they're going after them and getting them caught. I, I just don't care anymore. Like I just, it's, it's not building to an end climax um, for it. So comparing it to Andor, I feel that it's, so if Andor is a 10, we'll just give Andor, even the beginning episodes I enjoyed for Andor, a 10, I'm going to give this a six and a half. Okay. Yeah, I think the action scenes definitely help make it entertaining. Um, however, I'm still not seeing the string, and probably that's on purpose on what's connecting all of this together. Um, I'm, I'm going to give it a seven, um, just because the, the action scenes and the world building around it, particularly around that particular planet, was interesting, but it still leaves a little bit more to be desired. So, yeah. Fair enough. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what next week will be. I think next week kind of will place it in which direction they want to go with it. But if we don't get more lore or more, and, and, and if we don't get some sort of, um, I don't know, further story development, it's it's gonna feel closer to some of that like original Clone Wars series. Um, even the Resistance show had conconical, you know, the way it was kind of scheduled. I don't need to see them go on a bunch of missions for this stupid dragon lady, that or lizard lady. Like I, I, I do not yeah. care. She doesn't look like a Trandoshan <laughs> to me. So she She's looks like an Trandoshan. actual lizard lady. <laughs> Bosk looked a lot cooler than she does. Because. He's a bounty hunter. That's why. That's fine. That's cool. <laughs> he does. He, he's <laughs> taller. He's a lot cooler looking. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, again, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's still good entertainment. Um, I okay. just will say that I would prefer there be a little bit more story and character development in terms of where do they want this series to go? Yeah. You know, so time for a way too early prediction does the bad batch survive the end of the season yes okay i think it does 
All right. I I don't um I'm not entirely sure that all of them would survive. I think Hunter is probably Oh, I thought you meant the show itself. No, no, no. Not like the, the characters the in the show. I'm talking about the units. Yeah. Yeah, oh. the characters, yeah. I thought you just meant the show itself. Does it survive no, for no. season three? I was like, yeah, I don't know. No, yes. I think the characters, because obviously we don't see them in any other part of Star Wars lore that we know of right now. They would have to end the show if they start killing off the characters. Uh, which I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, if they I don't do know. it for something meaningful, that'd be great. All mm. I know is that it better not be related to the Death Star. Well, can't, Way too many people. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they were magically on their own mission away from the rebels on the Death Star. Um, no, I feel this goes more of the way like the Mandalorian where he just kind of disappears, does his own thing. Um, he's not part, like we don't see the, Man the Mandalorian as part of the resistance in the movies, yeah. right? And they, 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 that can get explained away in different avenues. I think Bad Batch is kind of the same way. And if you think about it, it's kind of like with, with um, the Clone Wars, once some of those characters disappear, what happens? They didn't all die. And like in Andor, we see one of them, you know, characters. And I feel that, I don't know. I really think if they're going to kill somebody off, it's going to be Echo, I guess. To me, Echo would be the smartest one to kill off. Because if you kill Hunter off, that's like a huge emotional play. And like, I think killing Hunter off devastates more of the timeline than anything else, I guess. Yeah. He's the glue for that unit, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I yeah. I'm not so does everybody live to the end? Yes, I feel they do. Yep. I don't I they didn't kill anybody really off season one. Well, I mean, you know, the rest of the Caminos, the Caminoans. <laughs> Well, we don't know how many were on there. That's true. So. And we do know Camino clones show up later on and throughout Star Wars all over the place, especially even in the Mandalorian. They should, like that technology, that theory behind and different things like that show up to it. Yeah. You know, you know, what? what is the rumor that like the Caminos are behind help surviving, you know, like him being able to clone himself and all these other things based on their technology and his knowledge of the force. So um, I'm not sold on any of that, on any of that being different. I, I don't know though. I, I guess I too, I say, no, I'm going to go back to my original answer. No, they don't kill anyone off. Um, that's what I'm going to say. I'm sick. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, all right. Well, that was our universe extended discussion on bad batch episode one and two. Next week we will be back with episode with with the discussion about episode three for episode twenty in our Kinconical series of having conversations about crazy Star Wars stuff that happens. But either which way, thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week. Next week, nine PM Eastern for our regular podcast, and then ten thirty to eleven ish for our universe extended episode. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week. See you around.